Continuing on with my mini series on the most active plaintiffs law firms. Today, I have a complaint that was filed in September 16, 2022. And the signing lawyers were the law office of Paleo Duran. So Paleo Duran, and then also Roderick Hanna. So let's look at the claims inside this complaint. Um, one is a homepage button company logo is mislabeled. Um, B, the submenus are not fully accessible when navigating with a keyboard. C, the prices for a product are not properly labeled, and they name the product, but I'm just skipping over the name. The regular discount and sale price are not distinguished from each other. And then it's, it's a once A, and it's another product name, is selected. The item's image, name, special offer, and quote-unquote final sale, no returns or exchanges are accepted, quote, are not labeled. And then there is a there's an out of stock notification. If the item is not available, the option is grayed out, but still read by the screen reader. Also, the quantity option is mislabeled as uh, quote unquote zero button off quote, and the shopping cart is mislabeled as quote unquote claim mine. Now, the next paragraph is very interesting, and um, in this case, we have a complaint where a website, it looks like at the time uh, the plaintiff went to the website, there was an overlay installed. And so paragraph 22 following these claims says the plaintiff attempted to locate an accessibility notice statement or policy on the website. Um, and then it says, although the website appeared to have an accessibility statement displayed and a website enhancement quote unquote app installed, that accessibility statement in the app, when tested, could still not effectively be accessed by and continue to be a barrier to blind and visually disabled persons, including plaintiff. Plaintiff, thus, was unable to receive any meaningful or prompt assistance through the accessibility statement and the widget plugin to enable him to quickly, fully, and effectively navigate the website. So this gets, this is right here. This is a complaint filed in court. Let's see what court it was filed into. Um, let's see, this was brought into the United States District Court for the Southern District of Florida. Another complaint where an overlay is completely disregarded. And it, it's happening so much and people continue to buy overlays and um, I will go back and I will look at the archive.org and see if I can't find the URL of the um, overlay that was installed and I will post that in the description but overlays don't work and, and so you have to be careful with um, the vendors and the sellers and what they're telling you because what they're telling you does not match up with reality so many times. And in this case, there was an overlay installed. I'm sure um, the defendant in this case um, thought they had uh, made a resolution of sorts, and they had. And the plaintiff's law firms walked right through the overlay, did not care. And um, the other part of this is rightfully so. Overlays don't make websites accessible. And if people would spend more than a few minutes of research, they would know this. But for some reason, when it comes to accessibility, people are willing to wholesale accept that there is this instant solution that can make everything um, accessible, and it's just not the case. And so um, what's also interesting about that paragraph is the plaintiff was looking for an accessibility statement, or at least that's stated in the complaint. So the accessibility statement here has weight, has material weight in terms of the actual accessibility of a website because although a statement does not make the website accessible um, directly, it can indirectly help with access. So I'm not saying that an accessibility statement would have prevented this lawsuit, but it did weigh in enough to where the plaintiffs, the plaintiff lawyers did include this in the complaint. So uh, that is relevant, um, but this gets into, um, we've seen some of these claims before in this complaint, they did get more specific, um, but over and over again, we've seen 
We see common themes with accessibility issues, and this is why I created the ADA compliance course, so that anybody can know what are the most commonly claimed issues in litigation and go and focus in and prioritize those issues first and then continue on with WCAG conformance. It's, you, it, there is definitely a strategic component to this. It looms large. So if you approach website accessibility strategically, you are going to lower your risk of litigation as you work through your website. So that is why I created the ADA compliance course because the sellers and the vendors are not aligned with litigation. And in some cases they are marketing their products and services as such. But to be truly aligned, you have to be aligned with what the plaintiff's lawyers are looking for and claiming. And that is why I go through uh, these different complaints and walk through them so that we we can see it's very obvious okay we have what are what are the exact claims that plaintiffs law firms are making and i just went through some of them this is this doesn't mean that this is these are all of the claims but we see a, a reoccurring pattern and we can we can know what are common themes what are the claims that are most often coming up and these claims although the spe the specificity of them is um, a little bit different, but they, they come back to the same um, success criterion in the web content accessibility guidelines. So again, you work, you work through strategically, you take care of the most litigious accessibility issues first, and then you work your way into where you are becoming WCAG conformant. So there are about 15 of the most commonly claimed accessibility issues that show up show up among the most active plaintiffs law firms. I went through um, a handful today, but of course there are many more. And of course, um, that doesn't mean that another complaint filed by Paleo Duran wouldn't have different claims, but this gives you a, a good idea of what, what type of claims are coming up. And if you go through this mini series, which I will link through, I will link to all of the different videos below, um, you, you will begin to see a pattern and you will begin to understand, okay, these are the accessibility issues that keep coming up. And in my course, I tell you how to find these issues and then how to fix these issues. So the course is direct. I will link to the course below, but today we went through a complaint filed by Paleo Duran and this complaint was filed in, uh, in Florida.